Hello guys, welcome back. So JLo was essentially ambushed with Diddy questions while she was signing autographs at an event. So she was at the AFI Fest in Los Angeles on Monday, promoting her movie Unstoppable. While signing, a woman asked, JLo, do you have any comments about Diddy and the allegations? Hold it guys, hold it guys, hold it guys. Hold it guys, open it up wide, please, thank you. Hold it guys, hold it guys. Guys, don't lean, don't lean, man. Don't lean. She'll sign, don't lean. She'll sign, don't lean. Go back up, look, don't lean. Don't lean. She'll sign. Comments about P. Diddy, the allegations. Go back up, look, don't lean, don't lean. So she was at the end of the line of signing autographs. She promptly muted the elevator with her security after the question. The multi talented star's past relationship with Combs has come under scrutiny following the latter's arrest on S trafficking charges and they dated from 1999 to 2001 and apparently they broke up because of his cheating. One of the biggest scandals that happened while they were dating was the whole incident in the nightclub where people got shot by somebody who was shooting up the club. Days of deliberations, the jury now appears to be focusing on the gun possession and bribery charges against Sean Puffy Combs. This afternoon, jurors sent the judge two notes one of which asked for a transcript of a phone message Combs left Wardell Fenderson, once his driver, now the prosecution's star witness. During the trial, Fenderson testified that Combs was armed the night of the shooting at Club New York and later pressured him to claim ownership of a pistol police found when they pulled over Combs' Lincoln Navigator as it fled the shooting. And I just want to make you feel like comfortable, you know what I'm saying? Make your family feel comfortable. What exactly Combs meant by that is in dispute, but the prosecution claims the rapper offered Fenderson $50,000 or a diamond ring to take the rap for the gun. The jurors also wanted to hear a readback of testimony relating to Combs' former girlfriend, actress-singer Jennifer Lopez, who was in the Navigator when it was stopped by police. An officer testified that everyone in the SUV was ordered to put their hands on the vehicle, but Lopez walked away, saying she was going home. As she was being detained, a gun was discovered in the vehicle. At that point, a sergeant on the scene ordered everyone who was in the vehicle under arrest. The officer quotes Lopez as saying, it's not my gun. And it turns out that one of the victims has come forward and said it was Diddy who shot her. However, it was Shine who went to prison for nine to 10 years and Diddy was acquitted on charges of bribery and illegal weapons. This year, the music mogul was charged with racketeering conspiracy, S trafficking by force, fraud or coercion and transportation to engage in prostitution. He faces a minimum of 15 years behind bars and a maximum sentence of life in prison if found guilty. Unstoppable, the film J-Lo has been promoting over the past few months, was produced by her ex, Ben Affleck. So J-Lo made her first public appearance since her divorce from Ben Affleck at the Toronto International Film Festival last month. Ben was a no-show. The premiere in Toronto marked Lopez's first major public appearance since she filed for divorce from Affleck on August 20, the two-year anniversary of the former couple's Georgia wedding ceremony. A welcome back, a stunning side and a gorgeous front view. Eight unraveled bow ties from disaster. J-Lo sparkled like a disco ball in what everyone is calling the revenge dress. And irreconcilable differences was cited as the reason, as it always is with these celebrity couples. So the most recent allegation concerning Diddy involves a 10-year-old boy. He has been accused of essaying a 10-year-old boy according to a new complaint filed on Monday. Variety and others reported. It's one of two lawsuits filed in New York on Monday. In a second suit, a male accuser said he was essayed by Combs in 2008 while auditioning for making the band at 17 years old. Sean Combs was already fighting multiple sex assault allegations, each one more disturbing than the next. His latest accuser says he was 10 years old at the time. 
This morning, a California man alleges he was 10 years old when Sean Combs sexually assaulted him during a 2005 visit to New York. He was trying to break into the music industry, and a civil lawsuit says his parents left him with a consultant who brought him to meet Combs. The lawsuit says Combs complimented Plaintiff on his rapping and told Plaintiff that he could make him a star. Then the lawsuit says Combs abruptly pushed Plaintiff down and said words to the effect of, you have to do some stuff you don't want to do sometimes, before forcing him to perform a sex act. Diddy's legal team said the lawyer behind this lawsuit is interested in media attention rather than the truth and repeated that Mr. Combs never sexually assaulted or trafficked anyone, man or woman, adult or minor. In another new civil lawsuit, a man alleges he was 17 and auditioning for making the band when Combs assaulted him under the guise of questioning how he would handle situations involving sexual pressure. Combs denied this claim, too. These newly filed civil cases against Diddy are not operationally going to have an effect on his criminal trial. Now, if there is new evidence that is not in the hands of law enforcement that does come out during the civil trial, law enforcement can look at that information and determine if they're going to use it in their case against Diddy. The new lawsuits are the latest in a long list of civil claims against the music mogul. An Arizona woman says she took these images of Combs at a 2014 party in his Las Vegas hotel suite where she claimed he sexually assaulted her. And a then 13-year-old girl said Combs attacked her after the VMAs in the year 2000. Combs attended the award show with his then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez. Combs denies all of it. Each of the lawsuits is filed individually, leaving Combs to fight the accusations in multiple courtrooms. Combs has pleaded not guilty to criminal charges charges and is being held without bail at the federal jail in Brooklyn. So one of the allegations involves a 13 year old girl. She's saying it took place at a party after the VMAs and it's believed that Jayla was in attendance at that party. So he was accused of drugging and graping a 13 year old girl as two celebrities joined in at a VMAs after party in New York two decades ago, according to a new wave of lawsuits. So the disturbing allegations were laid bare in a slew of civil lawsuits filed against the fallen music mogul in the Southern District of New York late Sunday. In one of the suits, an alleged teen victim only identified as Jane Doe claimed she was attacked after having one drink that left her feeling woozy and lightheaded. At the drug field house party in September 2000, the court papers charge. Looking for a place to rest, plaintiff entered what she believed to be an empty bedroom so she could lie down for a moment. Soon after, Combs, along with a male and female celebrity, entered the room. Combs allegedly approached plaintiff with a crazy look in his eyes and grabbed her and said, you are ready to party, the filing added. The woman alleges she was then pinned down and graped by Combs and the male celebrity as the unnamed female star watched. So she alleged that Diddy tried to force her to perform certain acts. Uh, she fought him off by hitting him in the neck, according to the filing. The alleged victim said she then grabbed her clothes and left the bedroom, quote unquote, roaming naked through the house looking for the exit. Once outside, the den teen put on her clothes and walked to a nearby gas station where a female clerk who noticed her distress let her use the phone to call her dad to pick her up. The filing states. After the assault, the plaintiff fell into a deep depression which continues to affect every facet of her life. The girl said she ended up at the party after trying to get into the VMA show at Radio City Music Hall where Diddy was in attendance with Jennifer Lopez, his girlfriend at the time, without a ticket earlier that night. In a bid to cajole her way inside, the alleged victim said she approached several limousine drivers outside the venue, including one who worked for Combs, and invited her to the after party. You can imagine a young girl at this time thinking this is like a huge, a huge deal, getting invited to a Diddy after party. At 13, no idea what she's getting herself into. Very, very sad. The driver who allegedly told her she fit what Diddy was looking for later drove her to a large white house with a gated U-shaped driveway. She claims she signed a non-disclosure agreement preventing her from talking about what she saw at the celebrity field party. So she didn't name anybody, but she said that she witnessed widespread 
drug use, including marijuana and cocaine. And Didi's lawyer has basically asked for the names of these people. They've asked for the names to be revealed. A number of accusers who have been coming forward with years old allegations. This case is unique in part because of the number of individuals levying allegations against Mr. Combs due to his celebrity status, wealth, and the publicity of his previously settled lawsuit, the lawyers argued in the letter. This has had a pervasive ripple effect, resulting in a torrent of allegations by unidentified complainants, spanning from the false to outright absurd. And obviously, in these cases, it does attract people who are simply attempting a money grab, hoping for a quick settlement to make a quick buck. But at the same time, what happened with Cassie probably inspired more victims to come forward. It could be a combination of both. Combs' lawyers argued they needed to know the names of his accusers to properly prepare for his criminal trial for May 5. I'm sure he's sweating because he's wondering, this person, you know, who I had an encounter with, such and such, have they come forward? This person, has she come forward? Has he come forward? These lawsuits and even paying for this case could very well end up bankrupting him. So we shall see what happens. And people have questions, just like how that woman had questions for JLo. And JLo disappeared very quickly when those questions started coming. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Like, comment and subscribe. Press the bell for more and I'll see you in the next one.